Hello you know, everybody to a live stream here on Monday. It's January 4th, 2021. 21 is, is luckier than 20. It's all the elements of blackjack. What's up guys? Cheesy noob, I just got a challenge from. Mainstream Monday, five plus three through seven plus three casual blitz and rapid. Players with an established rating 100 plus rated games are welcome to challenge. Good morning, everybody. I don't know if Sheber Spiller will be along later, but it is his birthday. So, one of our friends here on Twitch. 21 and 21. Cheesy Noob, I will accept your challenge. Cheesy Noob is up over 2100, both Rapid and, and Blitz now. With his inventive style. Nice swindle yesterday for a draw. All right, I should have had you. The C3. What? You're playing the C3 Sicilian with white? Really? That I haven't seen from Cheesy New before. Going from the bizarre into the mundane unusual unusually usual um, reaction here by cheesy noob didn't think we'd see a c3 Sicilian fine with me I mean anything's better than that weird c3 bizarre stuff that I can't really identify the c3 Sicilian can be kind of dynamic at times I mean I really don't mind it it's not my favorite, but it's not as bad as the London system, as far as boredom goes. There can be some quite interesting positions re reached, actually, with this. So it is hard for Black to get the initiative. I've seen that done against the Scandinavian, but not in this position. The Queen is misplaced on F3. How can we take advantage? What if I check? You go queen e3 now. My move. It may not be a mistake, per se. I expected queen e3. So he's leaving his queen on this awkward square. With, um... No clear way to get it. Get himself developed. What are you doing? What are you smoking, my friend? <clears throat> wow. That's crazy. So I can take the pawn, but I fall a little bit behind development if I take the pawn here. Welcome everybody to my stream. We're getting underway with a quick blitz game. You know, the, the danger is that I fall seriously behind development. Take, 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 queen d3. I don't have knight c2. It's hard to protect my knight on d4. If I trade, he gets further ahead in development. But I'm guessing, like, take, 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 queen d3, I just take on e2, he takes the bishop, I play something like bishop d7, he castles, bishop c6, rook e1, knight f6, I really don't know why I'm thinking on this move, I mean, this is forced. The question is, do I take the pawn or not? If I don't take the pawn, he's still getting his development. The knight d2 is blocking him up, though. Knight b4 is also interesting.
No way to protect the knight. <clears throat> I could just retreat it back, but that wastes time. In other words, queen, queen d3. I don't see the point of thinking here for white. Queen d3, knight c6. Knight c3, threatening knight b5 there. Why would he think on this move? That's bizarre. He maybe left the building. He has literally one move, and he's thinking. I mean, I guess you could play queen c3, but it looks like a bad square where you're blocking your own knight's development. I mean, this is pretty much forced. Then he puts the knight on the wrong square. I mean, he puts the queen on the wrong square. That's just strange. It's a bad idea. I mean, now his bishop's not protected, and I'm threatening rook c8. And bishop b5. Although that's not a big deal. It might take away his castling ability. Not being able to play knight c3 robbed him of most of his compensation. That was the only thing that he really had, honestly. The only reason why I was slightly hesitant to go into this. Now he gets away. Down a mere one pawn. What do I do after castle? He's about a tempo short of having enough compensation. <clears throat> Again, thinking on the obvious move is very, very strange. That's two times in a row. The secret to creativity. Think longer on the most obvious moves and then don't play it. Seems to be the the basis for White's game. No obvious discovery here. that we've got a good structure It seems like Cheesy Noob's major thing is moving fast. That's your greatest 
strength here. Quick play. Now he's gonna take another pawn. I don't know, it's amazing that you can get to a position this good, playing so many crazy moves, and still have two minutes more than me. Yesterday's game was, was very strange too. Totally lost and he saves the game. Bishop f4. It's hard for black to coordinate. He stopped bishop, or sorry, he stopped rook b8. That's the idea. How can you be so fast and only be 1900 in bullet? I guess it's a good bullet rating, 1985. But I mean, there's people walking around who are like 2700, so. I don't know. You can't be that good at bullet if you're 1900. What's up, Prem K six six six? This was a strange move. He walked right into knight d five. I think I missed something there. What?
What? Just like playing random moves. It's hard to believe you're 1985 in bullet chess. The ability to play that fast. You think you would be faster. I see this with a lot of people who they seem like they're stronger in bullet, yet their bullet ratings are lower than their, their blitz ratings. Does anybody understand why that is? Is it just because of people tilting like he would normally? I mean, he should normally be like 2200 in bullet. He's probably stronger in bullet than regular chess. I mean, it just must be like, what? what's your maximum bullet rating? 2080, I don't understand. I mean, you should have like at least crossed 2200. That's weird. I mean, you seem stronger in bullet than you are in, in normal time controls. I see that with a lot of people though. It's weird. I'm just fortunate that he hung a queen. You know, I mean, his play was like master level, the whole time pressure, except for that last move. Yeah, you only use time on purpose when you have like a, a moment where you want to make some kind of weird move. That's when you use time. Like on obvious moves, you thought for like 45 seconds on queen d3 and played like a weird move instead. All right, we've got no challenges. No, it just disappeared and came back. That was weird. You're extremely fast. How could you be lower in bullet than blitz? I just don't understand how that's possible. It's weird. I'm extremely slow, you know, so my bullet would be like lower than my blitz. If you're fast, you should be as good as your blitz, at least, a bullet. I just don't understand the bullet ratings. Play like Kasparov. All right. I'm supposed to take challenges from people who are subscribers to the stream. I like to ask people to subscribe. Man, we just like lost two challengers in one moment. Is there something having a lot of time makes you nervous? I think it makes most people nervous. The people who are very strong in bullet, I guess, are more relaxed. Well, I mean, if you do it enough, you become more accustomed to being in, in, in desperate time pressure. It also depends on your general mood. Like, sometimes I can be really, really focused and um, and not nervous and play, play better in fast time controls. It might depend how you feel that day, you know, how stressed you are or not. It's definitely not good to be nervous. It's a definite disadvantage. No, well, Ultra Bullet is not a thing, Heinrich Burger. That's like a. That was a April Fool's Day joke on Lee Chess. All right, B three. Let's see. It was created as an April Fool's Day joke, and then people thought it was real. There's a lot of things that waste time. So he just plays b3. I mean, this. I guess d5 is a good move. I feel like structurally, though, he can take on, on b4 and take on d5 and be okay. I have to look this up. You know, this move. Most people play queen c2, which is a better move. I'm not really sure. You know, maybe I could consider moving my bishop again. Transposing to a kind of Queen's Indian. 
Though I'm not sure that's right with my bishop out on C on A6 here. I'm definitely moving my bishop down. This bishop is misplaced. It should be like on B2 if you're going to play B3, I guess. Normally. I thought he should just take on B4 and take on D5, and my structure is a little bit funky. But again, this makes sense to clarify the structure. These pawns are kind of weird, but it's not so easy for me to do anything. I mean, he is going to be a little bit tied down to protecting, particularly a3. Fairly active Catalan, Queen's Indian for black. White's playing super safe. non-combative kind of style here. What do I do now? Knight e4 is a move. Knight d7. I'd rather get my knight to c6 if I could do it. Maybe we go with the full Karyakin. Karyakin likes the hanging pawns, I noticed. This is some of his Queen's Indian games. A lot of people are, are like I particularly am kind of freaked out by this pawn structure. I like the idea of playing actively with the hanging pawns, but I have had a bad result in some games. White just doesn't care. Just keeps cranking out quick moves. I admire your ability to just not try to have to make the best move, I guess. I can't stop myself from trying to play the best move every move, and it takes a lot of time to do that. Play like Kaspar was just like, whatever, e3. Not a perfectionist, but practical. I mean, that's what makes Magnus so strong, you know? He's the ultimate practical player. But I don't know, I can't find the middle ground so easily. I either try to find the best move, or not. You know, I don't really know. It's not easy to think about the game in another way. Like, let's just play any old okay move. That's hard for me. That's why I get in time pressure. It seems like that's the secret. Either I, I try to play the best move, or, or I, I don't know what to do. We'll play the second or third best move, whatever. Just any old move. Though this was a weird, kind of weird decision. You know, he plays e3 to reinforce the center, and then he plays d takes c, giving up the center. It's a Tarash theme. Wow. So he didn't take any time to think about Rook A2. He just instantly played Knight on BD2. See, that's the kind of thing. Like, a lot of people have been like, tanking here like should I play rook a2 play like as far as just instantly play knight on bd2 so that's what it's got to be like a mindset like I'm not even going to try to play the best move I'm not even consider like the other alternative how do you how do you teach yourself to do that you know just play the first move I, I see that's why I'm always like behind on the clock because I'm considering all the alternatives not just like a couple moves you know pretty much I try to consider all the options I can find that's why he's a minute ahead of me he's just simply not considering moves you know I mean is that a good way to play chess 
I'm not sure. Play the first move that doesn't look bad. Now I'm just thinking philosophically about the game a little bit. This is something that's important for for faster time patrols. Okay, I know how to do it. You know, I can obviously rush myself when necessary. White might be in trouble. Wow. Wow. Jerry. No brain, no pain. That's one of my mottos. But I don't have a mate here. It's so sick. I'm not sure he even saw F2 was hanging. He's also just incredibly lucky. Am I down a piece here? Yeah. So does that make sense? I don't know. I just see... I see bad things. I'm gonna lose on time. I just played like the random move, but I know that's the wrong way to play chess, 100%. How the hell are you so lucky that you just happen to have moves after missing like blatantly crushing queen f2 you're just like two minutes ahead in the clock totally missed it you're just lucky that you're still alive i mean it's crazy you're exactly like cheesy noob play too fast get a bad position man I would think that his play is justified in, an, in a non-increment game. But you can't play like this in 5 plus 3. I can play the whole game with 3 seconds per move. Not great, but enough to win a winning position. You can't sacrifice your position completely by trying to play for time. Especially in 5 plus 3. Maybe in 3-0, definitely. In 5-0, even there, probably. No, but it was the same thing, same exact time management as Cheesy New from the first game. Baby in or in non increment, I can justify it. But here, you know, he just blatantly didn't see Queen F2 because he's trying to play too fast. Never get a lost position. I mean, that's the first rule I would think of chess. You know, we try to avoid having a lost position. Getting a winning position would be the first goal, you know. The second best thing to like getting a winning position is never getting a lost position. See that move now? He didn't take on d5 there because he's like Mr. Practicality. What's up with that? What's his bullet rating? 1907, it's crazy, the same thing. He's like ultra fast and has a low bullet rating. How does that make sense? It's the exact same thing as Cheesy Noob. How can you be so fast yet not have a bullet rating? That doesn't make sense to me. I would think like the speed is his greatest strength here. I'm just completely coming apart. Check it out. 
Look at this. He sees the moves instantly. How could you be 1900 in bullet? I'm almost mated. Yeah, I'm lost. Almost lost. It's just complete luck that I might survive. And he's 50 seconds ahead on the clock. What? How is that possible? How could you be 1900 in bullet when your number one strength is speed? I don't understand. It just doesn't make sense. How can he be 1900, like lower in bullet? His absolutely number one asset is his speed. How does that make sense? I don't understand. I just completely barely managed to scramble a draw because he's so quick. Look at his ratings. The same as Cheesy Noob. Higher in Blitz and Bullet and lower I mean higher in Blitz and Rapid but lower in Bullet. I mean what is it? Are all bullet ratings like skewed low or something? I always assumed like bullet and blitz were like comparable. You get flagged, dude, you're super fast. I would say you're way above the average in speed. You're way faster than most Blitz players. Let's put it that way. I don't really play Bullet, but you're way, way faster than most Blitz players. Although I guess I'm not playing a lot of 3-0. It's weird. I don't know, would I be like 1700 in Bullet or something? Even back in the day, I was like 2200 on another chess site, even though I don't ever play Bullet. But what, what impresses me about White's play is his, you know, ability to, like, make quick decisions, even though he has a bad position. He's just willing to, like, do whatever. Here. Okay, this was weird. He, like, plays e3, and then he takes on c5. That's totally inconsistent. Why would you reinforce your center one move and then trade it off the next? Why even bother to play e3, I guess, is the question. So he does that. Here, here, whatever. And now you've got this capture, knight on bd2, and rook a2, and check it out, it's like, bang. He made this move in no seconds. He has three important continuations in this position. I mentioned only one. But I mean, you've got three important continuations, and you like instantly played one, using no time at all. It's crazy. I'm like sitting there, like trying to work everything out. Rook c1, and I missed something. Knight c3 apparently was stronger. I didn't see that though. I had this knight c3, 92. Yeah, you're, you're, you're like lucky. You were playing super fast. But I, I didn't, I started to panic at the end. Here I'm not sure, so sure. This position is funny. After this, I didn't know what to do. Computer says it's equal. Even white has a tiny advantage, which is... Here, look at my time. I have a minute and ten. I spend it on a minute, leaving me with increments to play queen d2. I mean, it's weird. At the end of the day, I mean, it's going to look like white, white made some mistakes early on. Black might have been in trouble at the end. But let's see what, what the breakdown is on, on the computer. Yeah, you were winning for one moment when I was in bad time pressure. I let it get out of control. So, 21 CPL, that's still like very, very high. It's interesting. All right. <clears throat> Hanishberger, are you a subscriber? Hanishberger may be a subscriber. I prefer to play the people who subscribe to my stream, obviously, no. He's no longer a subscriber, although he may have once been. I think he was at one point. Re-rent. Re-rent. 
Rerun has two draws against me. It's pretty strong. Don't remember the time control. So let's see. Eight, it's the same thing, that's crazy. Check it out, 1898 and bullet. Is there something happening with the bullet ratings? 1898 and bullet, 24, 25 and classical. Wait a minute here now. Okay, that's just like suspicious. 24, 25 classical. So the slower the time control, the more your rating goes up. All right. That would make him like a slow classical player. But he's fast, see? That's what doesn't make sense. He's 2400 and already has two draws against me. I'm expecting to play like a computer here. Alright, I'm just gonna resign, whatever. There was a very suspicious simul game by this guy against somebody else, against against somebody else. I'm not gonna play this. Alright, Hanisberger, what's up? Chestein 60. Jim is the expert. We'll ask him. Sorry, man, your, your account's too suspicious. 2400 classical, 1800 bullet. You play super fast. Strange simul games. I can't do it. I can't play when I'm suspicious of people. I play really bad. If I even think there's a 1% chance someone's cheating, I can't concentrate. I'd rather just not do it. CPI. So what am I doing here? I thought it was normal chess. <laughs> We're playing this like weird game. Nice bishops. How am I going to get those in the game? One maybe, but not the this. I'm just not gonna play suspicious accounts, man. I can I can have my own opinions. But I'm not trying to create any sort of animosity. I just can't, I have to be honest, I can't play when I'm suspicious of, of people, sorry. The games that you played in some simuls, not only against me, were, were weird. All right. So we got c5, bishop b8. That was a good game though, 21 CPL for Prem. Actually, I thought he was like completely busted. Actually, I'm surprised our sent upon loss is that low. Considering that he allowed knight c3, knight e2, which is like winning the exchange. I mean, if you get a lost position or close to a lost position, should your sent upon loss be that low, like down around 20? I would assume like 20 cent upon loss games would require that you almost never had a loss position in general. But I think that last game, you know, we both had like virtually lost positions. Which is kind of weird, you know, at one point you're basically winning and at one point I was almost winning. And yet at the end of the day, the computer says our cent upon loss was quite good, you know. I don't know. I guess you're allowed one you're allowed like one major mistake but that's like an almost lost position so chess 960 like Hanish burger no relation to troll on a roll yeah there needs to be another way of analyzing games other than sin upon loss something more human It bothers me that castling is different with, with chess 960, like you have to click the rook or whatever.
I reserve the right to play who I want. Mr. Coffee, what's up? How's your New Year's? Are you back to work? Working from home? Or hardly working? It's always like a battle to get the bishops in the game in Chess 960. Guys, don't let me forget I have to leave like 15 minutes early today. Normally I'm streaming two and a half hours. GM Tranquilizer. You're the fake Tranquilizer. Of course. The normal Tranquilizer is a VIP in my stream. Last time I checked. We played this game before with fake tranquilizer. The can this tournament be continued? Anybody know? I haven't heard. You know, like the Russian super final just happened. But see, the problem is exactly what happened in the Russian Super Final. So you have the tournament and then somebody gets COVID, it destroys the whole tournament, you know? And that's the problem. So Antipov got COVID in the middle of the Russian Super Final and it screwed up the whole tournament. It would be nice to have the, the candidates tournament, but if someone gets COVID, it's like destroying the whole thing. You really have to be careful. I mean, you put them in like a bubble or something. They'd have to like literally be in a bubble like the NFL or NBA or whatever, you know? I, I just, I don't know. You got to keep them in some sort of bubble and not let them leave. I mean, that would be the only way to have the tournament. You can't have somebody getting sick in the middle of the tournament and dropping out. It's just, it's crazy. They've got to make sure to completely like isolate them, I would think. I was thinking of giving up my white score bishop. Maybe I won't, you know, maybe I won't. It's just safer. <sighs> safer this way. I'm a little scared of his d5 though. He can play like knight g5, I have h6 there. This d5 right away looks looks dangerous. I guess I could play... My last move is bad, though. It was better to have my queen protecting f6. I guess I could always go back. No joke. Literally, the best move after d5 might be queen d8. Just admitting my mistake. You think they're ruining hockey? Well, if it's done properly... Um, you know, the players, I guess, you know, hockey is one thing, it's like a whole season, but we're talking about one tournament. They can be isolated for one tournament. You know, they can sacrifice a couple weeks. You're talking about a sports season. I mean, we're talking about just one chess tournament. Typical Canadian. What are we going to do? All they care about is hockey. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back. I should I should have never played Queen D seven. How dare I have any kind of active plan? I mean, I'm gonna keep this protected in case of Bishop on A one. It is a passive idea. Hanish Berger is that a character from an Adam Sandler movie? It sounds like it. 
now that you mention it. That's a very likely possibility. Queen c3. Wait a minute. Oh, you're not. Confusing me, man. I don't know. But I'm just talking about if they want to hold that candidate's tournament. Here we go again. He's got the uh, the long diagonal set up. Does anybody know though? I'm mean, talking about bullet ratings earlier. Seriously. Is it that the bullet ratings are generally less inflated than blitz because I always like treated them comparatively is everybody lower in bullet than blitz is that a normal thing I never really thought that it seems to be the case though right right I mean, there's people who exclusively play bullet. There's people who exclusively play blitz. But there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, carryover. I would see a lot of the higher rated players and compare them. You know, the guys who are like 2,500, 2,600. They're always around the same, pretty much. So I just always judge by that. But I mean, I'm, I'm encountering this phenomenon where it looks like most of the people I'm playing are, are higher, definitively higher in Blitz and Rapid then. Well, if you can navigate. Yeah, different, different rating systems. I'm not sure. Possible. One site is less inflated. I guess all those computers keep the ratings down. Alright, Bishop D5. This was Heinisberger creative <laughs> crazy. He's quick too. Alright, I've got time. Um, about an hour and We've got an hour and 20 minutes left, so plenty of time to take some challenges. Goo from Hungary. Is anybody here a subscriber to my stream? Chess Master's challenge is the wrong time patrol. 5, 3, through 7, plus 3 with increment, please. So 5, 3, 5, 5, whatever. 5, 4, if you like. I mean, anything between 5, 3 and 5, 5. 6, 3 and 6, 5. 7 plus 3 is the longest time patrol. Anything longer than that, it gets too, too much dragging on. Sada Masagana might be a subscriber. I mean, hyperinflated as compared to what? I mean, is, is real chess the ultimate comparison? So what's up with goo? 16, let's see, see, there you got lots of bullet games, rapid 2067. So look at that difference. 200 points between bullet and, and rapid. I'm just asking a different question. I never really get an answer on it. My question is, is bullet less inflated? I mean, is, is bullet less inflated than, than Blitz and Rapid? All I get is this chess.com is great answer, you know, but what I'm asking is like specifically on this site, 
Does anybody else think that Bullet is less inflated than the other time controls? That's what I'm wondering. I never really thought about it, but it looks like people's bullet ratings are definitely less inflated. But I guess um, you have to be a, an expert or something with the bullet. Oh, this is GM Tranquilizer? Is this you? Yeah, well, I don't agree with the rating system. Any rating system where people are gaining and losing like 60-some points per game or some crap like that. I don't like the Glico rating system. I think that it's garbage. So, I'm not a mathematician. I have... You know, not any training and not enough training to be an expert, but um, besides a couple of statistics courses, I still don't agree with it. You know, there's no way, like, even if a 1200 beats Magnus Carlsen, there's no way he should gain, like, I don't know, 70 points or something like that. I think that it's crazy. You know, there's no way your rating should be able to fluctuate that much based on one game, no matter what mathematical argument you make. Or whatever it's too much you know like over the board chess we have some sort of maximum you can gain it's more realistic although if the k factors are higher um, the k factors are higher or lower it makes a difference but I don't think that people should be like the rating should be I shouldn't lose like 70 points when I lose on my get disconnected against the 1200 you know in my opinion that's here this is a book line actually c3 Sicilian but you're supposed to play what are you supposed to play here, actually? Maybe it's not a book line. Never mind. I'm not sure anymore. Anyway, you know, that's not, that's probably not great. I just don't see how you should lose or gain like massive amounts of points based on one game. You know, that's how this, that's how the inflation starts. There should be a very, very, you know, controllable minimum and maximum that you gain, you know. Kind of like over the board chess. I don't like the crazy K factors people have. Fides instituted different rules where there's like three different K factors. That wasn't always the case, you know. Um, I feel like there should just be like a provisional stage and then one K factor, period. That's it. I mean, I'm playing with people, and there's this arbitrary, like, boundary where if you're 2400, if you reach 2400 in over the board chest, your K factor is lower than someone who's only reached 2399. That's, like, absurd, you know? That's like, you can buy alcohol when you're, you know, 20, but you can't when you're 19, and I don't know. It's not a good analogy. But anyway, the, the borderline is, it's, it's arbitrary. There's, like, I'm 2400, and my friend is 2399. And he can gain, like, I don't know, 50 rating points per game, but I can only gain 25. You know, that that's ridiculous. It's totally unfair. Absolutely unscientific. It's totally crazy. Like, there's no way that should be in place. Um, it doesn't make sense. There's no way that people's ratings should, should change, like, by massive amounts of points based on, on one game. It's just one game. No, seriously, though, my point is, is good. I think this is the point, you know. The K factors and over the board are, are bullshit. There should be no difference between a 2399 and a 2400 player. It's easy for a 2399 to become a grandmaster. He can, like, gain massive amounts of points, like, all in, like, one month. But for the guy who's 2400, he's going to really have to struggle to get the GM title because he can't change his rating, you know, overnight, like the guy who's 23.99. It's absurd. Anyway. Whatever. I'm getting rant, I'm ranting on random subjects. This all started because I thought that people's bullet ratings seem less inflated. 
A6 is a great move. Now what am I going to do? That's very upsetting. I guess I made a mistake. No, I think there should be a provisional stage. But that should be it. Like, one provisional stage for, like, your first 25 games, and you get an established rating. And then... Then that's it. You know, no K factors. And all that. Everyone should be weighted the same. Man, I screwed this up. That's the way the USCF rating system used to work. There were other imperfections in that system, but but basically it, it worked. 1K factor, provisional rating until like 20 games or something like that. It had its imperfections, but it was more or less sound. I don't like the way the FIDE uses three different K factors. This guy's kind of a genius. His opening was so bad that I stopped taking him seriously, but now I'm I'm wondering if I'm even better at all. I don't understand why you're saying I see everyone suspiciously, GM Tranquilizer. You're the guy who's like pretending to be someone else and asking me why I see people suspiciously. That seems kind of odd, dude. You like appropriated someone else's name and you're wondering why I see people suspiciously. <laughs> Is it just me or does that seem kind of strange? You're trying to do like identity theft. Experience, you know, makes us what we are. If I'm if I'm paranoid, there's a good reason for it. Um, I would say it just didn't happen in a vacuum. I think he should have played b5 before and not ever let my knight get the c4. That's what I was really afraid of. We're products of our, of our experience. If no one ever cheated against me, I would never be paranoid. But since it's so prevalent, now he's, he's offering this knight, knight takes f7. Knight f7, rook f8, and then I have to play the other knight to g5 to protect it, and I'm like losing my e5 pawn? Maybe not. I'm not sure if it's worth it <clears throat> to actually go for that pawn. It does break up his pawn structure, though. Even if I don't win a pawn here. That was a quote from The Office. I never watched that show. Maybe I should. Never really worked in an office. I always kind of avoided it. So it would seem illogical to watch a show about what I've basically avoided my whole life. All right. Hmm. That could be a problem. Right, anyway, I was prepared to give the e5 pawn back. It's alright. 
I gotta watch this F4. Yeah, that's not not a problem. As I said, like structurally, he's he's worse here. He seems to be pretty good tactically. He's playing on calculation mostly. This is a pawn. This is protected, so there's no pin. Mr. Coffee, you recommend the office? I did that. All right, so now do we have any chance to save the game? I just hung a piece. <sighs> yeah, that was a good move. God, I'm a genius. The extra bishop might help black. Normally I would resign here. I'm down a clear piece. I should just resign. Check him out with the e5 move. I said he was good tactically. He's 1549 in Blitz. Um, okay. I guess he doesn't play Blitz. I should just resign. I hung a piece. King c6. Good move. Strange position. <clears throat> that was a brilliant move. He saw that. Something weird going on here. No, it's not equal. It's over. The pawn is super dangerous. I don't remember that I played this guy before. I'm trying to figure out everybody's ratings, understand some insights into their game by like comparing the ratings. It's kind of weird. I, I think I'm going to give up at some point trying to understand people based on their ratings. This is obviously a horrifying game. I mean, I was down a piece. <laughs> I got it back. I was going to resign. Flagging is the most important skill. Yeah, but I don't think you're you're um, putting enough emphasis on the the difference between like increment and non-increment blitz. 
Flagging loses a lot of importance when you're talking about increment. If I was a little more awake, I would have won that game against you, Prem K666. And maybe not in a 5-0, but in 5 plus 3. I don't want to rematch. Sorry. It's like for the rest of my life, I'm going to be challenging him to a rematch. You can't, like, get rid of it. Sada Masagana. All right. Blunder Panda making March. Vera Carlson. Nitin. Am I pronouncing that right? Nitish. Sorry. Nitish. Indian names are really hard for me. All right, I don't don't think we're going to get more than five or six of these challenges. We're going to try. Yeah. The fact five plus three are better with more players. Last time was a Grunfeld. Today's Schieberspieler, my friend Schieberspieler's birthday. So I haven't seen him yet, but I wonder if he'll be streaming after me. No Grunfeld. So Sada Masagana plays the Grunfeld and the Kings Indian. I think that's excellent. You know, if you play the Fianchetto defense with black and you can play Grunfeld, Kings Indian, and Benoni, you'd be like one step beyond Boris Gelfand. Boris Gelfand can play the Grunfeld and the Kings Indian, but he's like bad at the Benoni. Mamajaro beat him a couple times by like playing a tempo down Benoni with white. But Masagana plays Grunfeld and Kings Indian. That's that's enough, you know, to be pretty good. I guess. What am I gonna do? So this was weird. You allow the Kings Indian, but you prefer to play the Grunfeld. Dude, that's very strange. All right, I'm running out of things to play against him. Snake Benoni. Well, Snake Benoni is probably not objectively very good. But it is a kind of decent surprise weapon for people who maybe aren't really taking it seriously. I mean, against opponents who aren't really prepared or taking it seriously. I remember my friend... Alexander Minea played it like in the last round of some tournament in in in, um, in Hungary, and I was like, "Dude, you play the Snake Benoni?" He's like, "No, I don't know how to play Snake Benoni. I just played it in the last round or something." So he he didn't even know what he was doing, but he did it and it confused his his opponent, who was actually a pretty good player. I mean, I think that it's something you encounter so infrequently. Especially if Black knows what he's doing, it's kind of tricky. It's too hard to spell, um, Schieber Spieler. Spieler Horse. I was joking about that. If we combined our names, it would sound funny. Schieber Horse or Sparkle Spieler. So, Sada Masagana. What's strange about his opening move order is, is like I said, I just tried to play an antique Grunfeld move order, and he didn't care. But the minute I gave him the option between the Grunfeld and the King's Indian, he went for the Grunfeld. That's so unusual. Normally, if you let them, they'll always try to go for the Grunfeld. They'll never allow King's Indian. But it's flexible to be able to play both. As I said, A5 is an interesting move. An interesting move. I believe. Okay, so maybe H3 here. Yeah, no, Fisher and Kasparov both play. Both played Grunfeld in and Kings Indian. Well, the Fisher played the Benoni as well. So Fisher is the the best example. Yeah, to be able to play the Benoni, Kings Indian, and Grunfeld. That's the ultimate triple triple threat.
f5 may not be the safest move in this position. With my bishop on that diagonal, I'm not sure that's a really good idea. It's hard for that to generate counterplay without f5. That's the other possibility is for c6. <clears throat> oh, now he's got a4, duh. Blunderman. Blunderman, Blunderman. So what if I play bishop takes b6, a4, bishop takes b6. Pawn takes b3. Blunderman can. Maybe he has an antidote for that too. What a weird position. Knight c2, rook c1. At least he's using time. Most of my opponents like play instantly and they don't have to think about their decisions. Schieberspieler, game spoiler? Game killer. Yeah, it's German. The concept is is like a vampire like Carpobian style of play, I guess. We had this discussion once. Chess vampire. I guess knight a two is not so bad. I suppose I, yeah. Could I have taken on f eight? It looks dangerous, man. But I actually calculated. WFM Dorina. Hey, what's up? What about Schieber Spieler? Have you seen him online? I wanted to wish him happy birthday. If you see him, wish him happy birthday. I mean, you see him online, obviously. Not in real world. I never leave the house, almost. All right, B takes C. What about school? Do you have school? I guess a lot of people like high schools maybe don't have school. They have like online learning and stuff. I'm so glad I'm done. I'm done school. That was one of the happiest days of my life. All right, what are we gonna do? Rook e8, and I could take the pawn on b7, but then rook b8 and my queen is almost trapped. I guess we have to do this. Hmm, it's a perpetual. Queen b7, rook b8, queen a6, bishop b5 wins the exchange, so queen a7 is a draw by rep. No. I take and play queen a7, and then of course I can trade queens. But I mean, I don't know how much I have here objectively. This is very technical. School is fun. I'm just kidding. I just was talking about this with my son the other day. We were joking and and I was saying, haha, you still have to go to school. He was like, haha, you have to work. Um, but uh, we just kid around a lot. We joke around a lot. Knight G5 is not happening anymore, so Sadama Sagana just decided he decided he's gonna be positional. Until reinforcements arrive. There's that diagonal again. No, I just, today was the day my kids have to start school again. That's why I was asking about it. 
I was I was happy when I graduated from high school, and I was happy when I got my college degree. Yes, I finally don't have to study anymore, ever. I can't say I loved school. I wish I had appreciated it more. So bishop takes h3, holy cow. I don't want anything to do with like pawn takes h3, queen g5 check. You think I could capture that? God, check. He has all sorts of, of things. Even there's like bishop h6 coming in. My spider sense has said that it's not healthy. This is my original plan, but maybe black has enough counterplay here. Wow. So close to something. I have f3. A solid move. You gotta watch rook b2. this coming down but white is clearly better Karpov you're done against Tolia no chance speaking of chess vampires I mean black has two pieces that are pretty much shut down Bishop e6 I underestimated I guess didn't think he can can do that. I mean, if I were black, I wouldn't be seeking an end game. So I was a little surprised by his play here, but maybe. I had a similar game against ten year old yesterday. Mostly when you're down material, you don't trade queens and you don't trade pieces. So I had this one game in my Samuel yesterday where my opponent was like seemingly like trying to trade off pieces even though he was down serious material <clears throat> it looks like he's got pretty good chance to hold that is very 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 sad I'm sad. Yeah, nice prophylactic move. No. That's it, it's just the draw. It looks like a draw, smells like a draw. But his king side is a tiny bit more weakened than mine. Could there be something here? <laughs> his defense is unbelievable. Nice move, rook c7. No time left, holds it. Wow, that's impressive. Maybe not. Still a draw. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Draw is draw. I wonder what the center pawn loss was for this one. I was winning. It was it was kind of like the other game with Prem. Neither side played perfectly. Damn. Um, A5 is a TN, but I think a viable move. White was clearly better. But you hung, hung in there. 
I'm plus four now. So this is where, this is where 666 was like, what? So I underestimated this, wow. I thought he would have enough compensation. I just didn't see rook takes a8 works. Even so, I mean, it's not that clear. Like, what's this? Plus three for white? Wow. Okay, I mean, I... I didn't see queen d3 here. I thought I had to take and, like, give him, like, this crushing pass pawn. According to the computer, even, this is better for white. I mean, I see two bishops in this pawn on the sixth, and I'm... I'm pretty nervous here. That's surprising that the engine says it's so much better for white. You know, I didn't think that was so obvious. I was afraid I was like losing the initiative there. So I played this like safer way. Probably not enough. Dude, that's the engine move. Bishop takes h3. Seriously. Wow. Then it's like not sure. He has lower center pawn loss than me. Bishop takes h3 is engine. If I take, it's very scary, you know. So again, I'm like winning. Bishop e6 was a cool move. It seems like after this, I, I don't have enough anymore. Interesting. Well played defense by Black. Blunder Panda. Trouts, what's up? No, but I mean, you know, for the computer, it's like plus three. Oh, it's probably winning. But I mean, I don't want to give the opponent the initiative in a blitz game where I have limited time. If I can keep it under control and keep a slight advantage, that would be my normal procedure. Most people's endgame technique isn't that good. So I'll always take the slight edge without risk. My experience tells me that most of the time people... People play badly, even in drawn in games, they tend to lose them. But yeah, for different players, it's different. Some people like complications. Of course, I'm a little bit slow time wise on the clock, so in this time control, I don't really go for complications too much. Let's say I have no other choice. A3 is a really classic. Petrosian variation of the Queen's Indian. We'll try something risky. Normally black plays bishop b7, knight c3, d5. Preparing, I mean preventing d5 by white, preventing e4 by white. Queen a4, I don't know what he's doing. <clears throat> this is completely weird. I am in a state of awe. I'm not sure what he's doing. I guess he's used to playing that in some variations where black goes bishop a6. So he's trying to do the same thing. Yeah, I mean, the computer is basing most of its analysis on, on concrete calculation. So you've got a 20 move depth in most cases. A lot of the times, like that position we looked at where I didn't I didn't play the best move I have to base on intuition what the computer is is brute force calculating 20 moves I can't you know obviously do that the bishop takes h3 was an interesting sacrifice he did almost like immediately this is interesting b4 The only move that doesn't fit in is queen a4. What does that have to do with b4 or the whole the whole position? It's weird that it's not not that harmful for white. It, it almost helps a little bit with like the light square control. Okay, this double fee and cato type of setup, it's it's pretty rope dope um, I'm not going to argue that this is a great variation for black. But a lot of players like to play the double fianchetto to keep it kind of murky. I don't know about a6. 
It seems like hey, that's his side of the board. Well, what is, where is my counterplay here? There, there basically is no counterplay. Put his queen on c2, we have more or less normal position. It's a very quiet line for white. This is crazy. <clears throat> Putting his queen on b5. What is white doing? I wonder if I could trap it with something tricky like d5. No, I don't like what he's done with the place. The decorations. Saludos from Brazil. Marcio. Yeah, White, White's playing crazy moves with the queen. The whole thing is bizarre. Queen a4, queen b5, queen g5, queen g3. And then White's position is, is not so bad now. The queen is outside the pawn chain, and it's likely to be harassed or attacked. I'm surprised by d5. I think he should play pawn takes pawn create a common open file. Now his queen looks dangerously placed. I might be able to just concretely nearly trap it. Nearly trap it, that's the problem. Nearly beloved. Blunder pandas. We've never played before, that's weird. For some reason I thought we had played Blunder Panda. And he's got less than 100 games. I normally ask people to have established ratings if you want to play. So Blunder Panda snuck in there. Snuck in there. I thought we played before. Where does the word rope dope come from? We used it in baseball terminology. It was like a weak. It was kind of like a weak single to the outfield that like barely got out of the infield. People would call it a little rope dope. But it's probably used in music and other things. It's from boxing. I don't think that Snoop Dogg invented the terminology. <laughs> it's a little older than Snoop Dogg. Blunder Panda um, with a weird game. I don't know what to say. There's something strange about Blunder Panda's game. Playing ridiculous moves like Queen A4, Queen G5, and then he's like a positional genius. I guess it's just my paranoia. All right. I want to get an f5, but I'm scared. Black will have some problems later on. He's also insanely fast. See, I don't. This is why I don't accept challenges from people who don't have established accounts. 
I ask everybody to have 100 games. Too many people like trolling. This guy's too strong for 1748. It's almost like he was messing with me in the opening. Like a subtle sort of positional style. Too advanced for that rating. Very trolly style of play by White. Like he's trying to play weird moves on purpose just to see how weird he can get. Both knights on the side of the board, queen a4. Finally he made a tactical mistake. Pretty blatant one. This wasn't a great game. But Prem, where are you talking about? Beat you in what? There are some people who do that on purpose. There was one guy in the streamer battle I play in. He's like a master who has a 1500 rating. He does it so that he can get easier pairings in the arena tournament. They're basically sandbagging their rating. Maybe they let like someone else play in their account. But that's the problem with the arena format. You have to place other strong players in the first round if you have a high rating. I think they purposely they purposely like want to have a low rating so their pairings are easier. His name was Sandbag. <laughs> I don't know, Blunder Panda plays a strange game. I feel like he's trolling me still. It's a lot of natural talent with maneuvering, but then some sort of like obvious blunders. Still, it's not so easy. <clears throat> the C five break has been in the uh, you know in the air for a long time. Okay. Juan Holme Gerches reading with a party of five. I can't pronounce anything. That's not easy. Thanks thanks for the raid. Juan Miguel Chess. Do the best I can with pronunciation there. Sorry. White's super fast too. Two minutes against 1960, 60, 19 seconds again. Blunder Panda Z. The Z is for fast. Looks like your uncle. I hope that's a compliment. <laughs> I hope you like your uncle. All right. White's playing weird, weird, weird chess, man, this game. But a lot of people tend to do that. They play too fast in general. There goes my time. But this is not sudden death time patrol. There's an increment. I gain three seconds every move. You cannot absolutely play for the clock. A lot of people are new to online chess. Now he saw that, that rook c1. I keep feeling like I'm hearing, hearing something. Three seconds isn't really enough. No, I'd like it to be 30. Can I have 30 please? Even with 30, I've like frozen like a deer in the headlights and lost on time. It happened in a tournament last year, two years ago, in an endgame, where I was probably drawing with perfect play, but it was pretty complicated.
Blunder Punda 1748. He's got no bullet rating. I mean, come on. He's 1600 in bullet. We're winning here, but it's not so easy. I must have mentioned it. How would you get that idea? Mention what? Did somebody mention, ah, uh, Acerbate already. Acerbate couldn't resist, he already gave it away. Look at that, tactical buzzsaw that is Blunder Panda. Where the blunders, Panda? The blunder, Panda. Not seeing too many blunders. Little ones, maybe. Baby blunders. Nothing serious. Okay, this F3 pawn is going to kill him. That means he has no king, so he's lost. But he is giving it a good try, though. Whoa. King and pawn in game. Inexperienced player. Go for this king and pawning game. Blunder pandas. Toast. Young player who's super fast, but no end game knowledge. You can't trade down in a king and pawning game down a pawn. Almost ever. Sheber Spiller knows about that. Grand birthday only for American eyes. What does that mean? So that was a weird game, man. Very weird. Weird play by White. I don't know what to say. Did he give me extra time? Hate when people do that. Trolling me further. So happy birthday to Sheeper Spieler. Wait, American 21st is the Hungarian 18th birthday? Oh. Right, right, right. Alright, so, yeah. She was feeling no real benefits about turning 21 in Hungary. Nils! It's always a place for you. We've got time for, yeah, probably like two or three games. She was feeling, are you gonna. Are you going to. Um, did I play. See, that's sexist. Are you gonna give. Um, I lost track of what I was saying. No stream today. Okay. That's what I was going to say. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for helping me figure out what I was going to say. Are you going to be streaming on your birthday? So Bishop C5 was my recommendation in this video series I did on the... I think this is my recommend. I think this is my recommendation on my video series on the on the Blumenfeld, um, just because it's like not as common as other other lines. Small chilling break due to birthday. Only beautiful female streamers discriminate based on looks. Oh, this match will take ages because it's seven plus three. I, I mean, I'm surprised how much little difference there is really. It seems like all my games are long. I got time for a couple more games. We're not going to get to all the challenges. Hopefully two more. Sheber Spiller, what about um, university studies? What's the deal with, with school now? My kids were supposed to go back to school today for for like, you know, school, school. 
you have online exams, but nothing in person. A lot of schools, like in European Union, well, I saw an article today that, um, you know, the conventional thinking was that Europe was pushing for schools to be open, to stay open, but I think in a lot of countries they may change that. It'll be interesting to see what happens in the last month and in the next month or so across Europe with the pandemic regarding schools because it's not clear if, if, if scientifically um, it's better to keep them open or not. There's a lot of debate going on. I'm going to play D5. Padre no Tony, what's up? He's, he's a knowledgeable guy. And Tony, he's a professor, and Tony, academic researcher. What about schools in Italy, Professor Tony? So it's basically transposed to the Tarash. There's very little theory on this move, bishop c5. I guess it could also be a symmetrical English. It is technically a symmetrical English. Here you go. That's what it is. It's also a Grunfeld reversed. It's funny how all these openings like converge. The Grunfeld, the Catalan, you could call it a Catalan, a Grunfeld, a Tarash, three different openings. Well, reverse Grunfeld, Catalan, or Tarash. All three openings in one. What well, White is playing here. Or what I'm playing. Stupid move to open schools right now. I mean, that's exactly why I brought this up. Like, my kids are supposed to start school again today. Though I'm not gonna, we're not gonna let them go till maybe a couple weeks at least. Wait and see what happens. But most kids have to go back to school in Hungary exactly now, just when like basically scientists are thinking it may be a bad idea. What's a clever choice? Well, I feel kind of stupid, honestly. Like, yeah, I mean, vaccines are starting. It would be really dumb to like stay in my house for like a year so that I can like go out and get COVID like just when vaccines are starting to get. Actually, a friend of mine who's a doctor, he's a surgeon for kids um, here in Hungary. He's like a pediatric surgeon. He just posted on Facebook that he got vaccinated. I guess frontline workers. He's the first person I know. But I mean, he, you know, He's, he's a wealthy doctor, but still, he's a frontline worker. The first person, it's a good sign at least somebody that I know has gotten the, gotten the COVID vaccine here in Hungary. So I'm basically sacrificing a pawn in a lot of lines. Knight takes d5, bishop d5, bishop d5, knight d5. We have some compensation. I also have knight d5, bishop d5, bishop d5, rook d8, maybe trying to sacrifice a pawn. I play this kind of position with white a lot, and it's scary to decide whether or not to take this pawn. But he has some problems, like Schieberspieler I think would probably go for the pawn. If he doesn't take the pawn, like he has trouble getting his bishop out, he can't go to b2 because the knight's blocking the fianchetto. How many academics watch my stream? I don't know. Antonis at a university in Italy. You're an academic. Um, someone on sound is a kind of researcher. We made him a VIP last night. So there's a lot of bright people watch my stream. I don't know why. Actually, I taught chess to some pretty smart people, especially when I was in Cambridge. 
I had students who were like doctors, professors, professors at Harvard. It's a snob, it's a snob academic stream. Not to mean Cambridge in UK, Cambridge in Boston, you know, where Harvard University is. Not to be confused with, with Cambridge University. We're talking about Boston, the home of the great Harvard University. Not quite as great as Cambridge. Unfortunately, I didn't go to, to Harvard. I don't have the the wealth or the credentials. Anyway, Harvard looked down upon the Harvard people looked down upon me. Trout's what? Yeah, you look looked at the squirrels. I looked at squirrels on a regular basis. I, I was, there were some people who would hang out at Harvard and pretend they, I had this one friend who was, I don't think, I think he went to UMass Boston, but I'm not sure if he ever got a degree, but he used to like take courses at Harvard Extension School and, and, and he would get a lot of like dates by telling people that he was, he was a Harvard student, but he was just like taking courses at the at the extension school. He's like, yeah, I go to Harvard. It's a great rap. Okay, technically like Orban went to Oxford. What's up with the B2 pawn? If I take, you take, I take, there's this massive liquidation. There's also the possibility of knight a4. Yeah, I mean, but the problem is liquidation. Black may only equalize here. Queen d3. Now that's an aggressive move. He doesn't even want his pawn back. He's trying to trap my queen. Wow. It's not so easy to trap my queen. Obviously. <laughs> what is Fahrenheit based on? Ask one of these scientists. I had a weak science program in my high school and I refused to take chemistry. It wasn't mandatory. We probably learned that at some point in junior high school. But I was never inspired. You gotta have inspiring inspiring teachers. I blame it on my teachers that I didn't like science. You gotta have an inspiring teacher. I had better English teachers and, and math, but, but science was weak. I'll never forgive them. Yeah, don't worry, Schieberspieler. All Hungarians are confused by Fahrenheit. There is no use for it, really. The metric system makes more sense. I remember being in like third grade and they were really trying to there was this huge movement to to encourage the metric system but it just sort of like died in its bed it never really got off the ground fully I still remember that 
a make the metric systems cool sort of movement. It was probably in the like late 70s. Oops. I'm not that old. Just ask Alexa. Alexa, order a pizza. I'm trying to mess with Acerbate. You gotta think of cool commands to trigger other people's Alexas. Trout's you could at least like watch. Breaking Bad or something. Trouts is like a true musician. All right, Bishop B4, Bishop F6, G takes F. Your Kindle just tried to order a pizza. Are you serious? Gotta be pulling my leg. Bishop b4, bishop f6, pawn f6, queen h6, rook takes c3, rook takes c3. What about a perpetual here? Does he have perpetual? I'm not going to let him mate me with queen g5 and queen h6. I guess you lose if you play bishop takes c3. Um, so, the question is, does he have... Does he have perpetual after something like queen h6? Possible. No. So, like, if you play bishop c5 in the opening, I chose this because it's playable and there's, like, no games. Hort played it once. Shariaz, Danam, and Brodsky. There's, like, three Grandmaster games in the history of chess. Because if you play any other move, you're playing, like, one of the main lines of the... of the symmetrical English. This should be for the theory, like, is extensive, d5, anything else. I used to play queen c7. But I got murdered a lot. I lost the weird Al Yakovich once. Maybe he, no, maybe I was white against him actually. He played it against me. You're always thinking about equalizing. But I mean, I have a repertoire I created for the Blumenfeld Gambit, you know. You can't like expect people to, to try to equalize with the Blumenfeld Gambit repertoire. You're playing for a win, I guess. I couldn't recommend, you know, something like D5 to people. I had to find something else. All right, we've got time for another game or two. I've got to leave by 10 minutes prior to the hour. The mad scientist, Virat Carlson. Guys, please support the stream by subscribing. Sheber Spiller is not streaming today. Maybe I can raid somebody else. Chess guy, if he's still streaming. What about Angelica and Pop G? Is anybody else streaming from the Hungarian streamer team, Schieberspieler? Yesterday we had a raid from Angelica. And I feel bad because I never I never have a chance to thank her by, by raiding her stream. Always it's like the same people are streaming in front of me. Wow, I think I just pre-moved. It's too early. I guess this could be an Aliakin's defense as well. Technically. C3. It's a good move. Um, 
Normally, let's see. I used to play this opening a lot. C5 is not working. I want to play C5. I've also looked at b6. I think knight b6 and bishop b3 c5 is a line. I had a game once. I remember with Fide Master Bill Kelleher. I don't remember what happened. Knight b3, bishop b3, c5 takes knight bd7, bishop e3, and then something like knight a6. Man, I'm not sure about this. I want to play c5. I guess I could play knight a6 to play c5. Well, one thing about like being a chess player I, I always struggled with was um, traveling to tournaments. Trouts, I remember the first time I went to a tournament by myself, I was really young. The first time I stayed by myself away at a chess tournament, it was like seventh grade. And um, the freakiest thing was like, you're like a seventh grade or eighth grade, maybe. I don't remember, but it was pretty young. And and I, I was staying at this hotel and I had to like eat at the hotel restaurant by myself. It was like the weirdest thing, you know, getting used to do that, to doing that. But I mean, you know, being like a solo traveler, I guess people just get used to it. They say like in Japan now there's like this huge, um, there's this huge like solo movement. Everybody like goes to eat out by themselves anyway. <laughs> For me, it was weird though. You gotta get used to it. I've traveled a lot by myself. And um, at first it's very, very awkward, but you get kind of used to it. It's weird sitting in a restaurant, like reading a book while you play. Another thing I thought of the other day, just totally other subject. Um, there was this guy who's kind of an ass that I know. I thought one of the most like insulting things I ever saw at a tournament was this master who he took a novel with him to the board. I'm not going to say who it was, but he took a novel to the board with him and then like whenever he played like a weaker player, he was like reading the book while he played like a long tournament game. Has anybody ever seen anyone do that? To like read a novel at the board while you're playing like a long game? It's like he was just trying to, he was just trying to diss, like he didn't do it against me, he didn't do it against stronger players, but when I mean, he was playing like a 2000 player, he was like reading his book at the board, and that's just like, that's just rude, you know, you're like, you're not a serious challenge, I'm just going to read my Robert Grisham novel or something while we're playing, but that's what you got to do when you go out to eat by yourself, I guess. Bring your novel. That is always awkward. I've traveled a lot and, and stayed a lot of places by myself. Getting a haircut while playing. I don't think that's in the rule book, man. You played a tournament, the Mechanic Mechanics Institute? Cool. 
There was an older guy that looked like a gold prospector. See, that's the kind of thing you probably get uniquely at the Mechanics Institute. Never see that on the East Coast. There's always old people, old creepy people. But I think they're interesting characters. I like it when the old guys, like, go to the wrong table and start playing the wrong game. Astrobate, GM Lamos doesn't care about whether you learn the Pierce. He wants you to buy his videos on some website. He doesn't care about you as a player. I have to break this to you. He just wants to make money. I'm not sure I'm getting paid by them for the videos that they sell that I've done. You know, I have to look into that. They sell a lot of stuff on their website that I'm not really sure is fully kosher. Now that you remind me. Yeah, I'm not sure I'm getting my royalties. That needs to be investigated. I'm highly suspicious. Once they asked me to make some videos for their site, but they had like all these requirements. Like you have to wear a suit when you require, you know, you record the video. I was like, dude, this is just too much. I'm not interested. It was just a hassle. I was like, you know what? I don't really care. Exploitationists. Oh, I've got 93. They're exploitationists. By the way, could someone report him to the Arbiter for outside assistance during the game? What are you talking about? Oh, reading a book. Yeah, nowadays, like, I don't know. Probably not, as long as it's not an electronic device. It's still cool. But the guy who was reading the book, he just did it to like insult his opponents and make them feel bad. That guy was such a jerk. I remember I played him a couple games and the time that he beat me, he was like really nice after the game. We analyzed and he was super friendly. <laughs> and then when I beat him like a month later or even weeks later, I don't remember, he was a complete asshole. That is how you know, you know, someone is a, is a good person. Their behavior totally hinges on whether or not they won the game. Guys, I'm almost done now. We've got to go in like 15 minutes. I think I could squeeze in one more game if it's 5 plus 3 against Dumb Saint. But that's going to be the last one. You know someone's a good guy when they're only friendly when they win. If I hadn't played him once before, I wouldn't have realized how two-faced he was. But it's so ironic when you play somebody and their behavior totally changes from like one, one week to the other. It was just kind of amusing. There was the same book guy. One of these really arrogant types. I think he's originally from, from Princess Chess, neck of the woods. I'm not sure if he still lives there. I mean, Chess Murph. Topic is arrogant Fide Masters.
I'll take Harrigan Fide Masters for 100 Bob. They're the worst. They're like frustrated. They never became an IM or a GM. So Vera Carlson hanging in there a little bit here. I don't want to play Rook D8 and let that Rook A1 and, and the A7 pawn becomes a target. Man, okay, we're both in time pressure here. Pawn wave. Kingside pawn wave. Okay. That's probably not great. Man. He's accelerating. Wow. See, I'm terrible at this part of the game. When we're both like in time pressure. Never been very good at bullet. I was a decent blitz player at one point. But I'm old and slow now. We're out of practice and anything. I don't have time to play because I'm teaching and, and like doing streams. This is my only practice. But I do have lots of time to come up with excuses for why I play so bad. Are you serious? Man, he misses. He misses queen B B6. It doesn't work. Queen A7, maybe. He had queen a7 with mating threats. Like seriously. What am I gonna do if he plays queen a7? Threatening knight f6 check and like mate in three. Please resign now. Yeah, it would help. I've got eight minutes left. All right. I just want to see if he had queen a7. Then the whole thing doesn't work. This is like evil. Threatening check here. And then mate on the back rank, right? the heck do I do after queen a7? It's a draw. Yeah, I figured it was a problem. The best I can do is like draw by perpetual. I don't know what to do. <laughs> Please resign now. Sounds like something some people I know would say. Anyway, alright, not a pretty time scramble. Dumb Saint last game, guys, I gotta go. No more practice, I have to work. No, I think the guy that I was thinking of, actually, wasn't near you. The guy, the book guy, the arrogant novel reader was from South Carolina now that I think about it never played chess in South Carolina I don't think there's a lot of chess down there
Actually, I never played chess in North Carolina either. Or most states. Georgia. Florida. Anywhere. I live in Hungary. You ain't ever going to that country? <laughs> what country? <laughs> South Carolina country? We went on a trip in high school to South Carolina. I remember buying fireworks. But no chess. Now, I don't want to live south of the border of the Mason-Dixon line. We might have another civil war. All right. Though it doesn't matter a lot here for an adopted Hungarian. You remember south of the border, yeah. The store. I went to Myrtle Beach once. It was like a high school trip and my, the older kids like covered me in shaving cream when I was sleeping. Typical, typical high school prank. My only experience with South Carolina. I miss the ocean though. It's weird living in a landlocked country I always lived on the east coast of the US, so always close to the the shore. Hungary is very strange for me to adapt to. Alright, dumb saint. What started well is gonna quickly escalate de escalate. Hmm. Bishop F seven check is a cool move. It looks like we have something here, but not really. <sighs> Guys, I gotta go after this game. Can we risk this? It, it's possible he gets counterplay on the F file. But it, it weakens his king, and it's not really a sacrifice, because we get our piece back. But I'm afraid that his counterplay along this diagonal, along the F file, might constitute something substantial you would have played this bishop f7 i remember once i crushed boros danish with, with bishop f7 in the grunfeld in like 19 moves but you never ever move your f rook away from c8 when that's a possibility that's a super weak square it's like Every Grunfeld player learns that early on. You know, you've really got to watch it here. It's not so bad. I mean, with the rook there, he didn't have to take with this king. You know, and that's the important thing. So we just get, like, a structural advantage, and his king is open. No material, necessarily. The BGs. Now he could play queen d5. I'm not sure if I took on c6 there. Oh no. What we have here is is a failure to calculate. Actually, it was a problem for him either way, huh? Maybe he has some sort of rook takes f3. If he took the other way with the king, with the rook, I have takes on c6 and queen c4 check. So I guess he had to do it this way. But maybe he should have played queen d5. 
And that was a serious possibility to play queen d5 here. But maybe this 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 is good for me, right? I'm just taking and playing knight e5. He has bishop b5. <laughs> but then queen b2. Leaves him in a world of hurt. Hurt world. Pain world. We have here is a failure to control the e5 square. I'm not sure. Did he really have to play queen d5? The end of the stream, guys. We're going to be back tomorrow night. I did create a tournament, so check it out for the team, for the Ponda team. There's Tuesday night rapid tournament at 6.45 tomorrow night. Join our Ponda and Horses Club. I want to see some players. Yeah, I love the East Coast of the United States. I mean, I've, I've been um, answering Chesmer. I live my whole life close to the water. It's, it's really weird to be here in, uh, in a land-based country. Hungary is all land except for a couple small lakes. Not a lot of seafood. Let's hope he doesn't have any resources here. I assume this is over. So COVID has finally really come to Thailand. Yeah, wow. Everywhere. You can't get away from it. It's even in Antarctica. They stupidly like brought COVID from Chile to Antarctica. <laughs> in, in the Chilean research station or something. The problem is the PCR tests aren't always accurate. They said they had like tested everybody, but how could they let it go to Antarctica? How dumb is that? Isn't it the anti-Arctic? It would make sense, right? The opposite of the Arctic. Antarctic. Alright guys. So, Dumb Saint. Thanks for the game. Nice knowing you. Looks like we're winning a piece. I can actually win a whole piece here with like night... Knight c6 blocker. Blocker check. Maybe I had a mate though. I don't see it. You know. Anyway, I can't take any more challenges. No more time for today. So, there's nobody in the in the waiting the waiting pool. He can continue torture himself a little bit longer. So in Greek, Arctos is bare? That's interesting. Theories. That's wild. In Greek, Arctos is bare. Land with no bears. The whole world's going to be land with no bears soon. If climate change doesn't doesn't sort of change direction. It's going to be the planet with no bears. Alright guys, got to go. We're going to be back later. Have a great night and I will be back tomorrow night. Tuesday night tournament rapid here on the team with the team check out the pond and horses club gotta go we love you all thanks for watching thanks for supporting the stream happy birthday to shiver spieler later guys thanks mr coffee see you guys later bye bye from the panda
The panda says bye-bye. 